Hey, I'm live. Hello, Tammy Treyer, treyerwilderness.com. I feel like the car is shaking. It is so windy. I'm late and I'm on the road. I am going to get the um, mountain boy and I was trying to find a rest area that had cell service and I finally found one because it's a good thing I really had to go to the bathroom and I wanted to go live so this is a win-win good morning Miss Krista Jo it's afternoon for you um, I, like I said I'm on the road I am going to get the mountain boy hello Miss Tammy and uh, I've got to share some funny stuff with you but what I would love for you guys to start sharing with me is what you are grateful for today. Um, I'm grateful for stuff every day and I can never list just one thing. My list just goes on and on. But while I share some funny stories about today's experiences, share with me what you are grateful for today. I am grateful um, for a rental car that has really good gas mileage. And I am extremely grateful to be going to get my boy. Um, thank you for your prayers for the safe travels. So far, so good. I just got out and had to use the restroom, and I nearly froze to death and blew away all at the same time. Now, I got to share something funny with you. You guys live in the modern world. I will tell you right now, I am not trading this car for my horse and buggy. No way. I got in this car and I've seen them before. It kind of drives me crazy, but you have to have the key close. This one doesn't even have a key at all. It's just a complete push button and you've got to have your foot on the brake and push the button at the same time. Now let me share why I struggle with that. My iPhone decides not to work sometimes and when it chooses to do that, I've got to power it down and start it back up again. What do you do when that button doesn't decide to work? Just curious. The other thing is I got in the car and went to drive and as I hit the brake I nearly go through the windshield. I'm used to the truck brakes and these are very sensitive. Then we get out on the highway. I'm out on the highway and all of a sudden it feels like my uh, behind is going to catch fire. And granted I'm used to power seats. I'm not that uncultured and heated seats. Um, I had them in my previous truck. However, there were very accessible buttons that you could push so that you could catch the fire that was lighting under your behind and tone it down a little bit. So there's buttons all over the place and it wanted to know if it could contact with, uh, connect with my phone and steal all my contacts. I was feeling a little violated. <laughs> it's just funny. It just cracks me up. I, I mean, I can only picture the mountain man if he was in this vehicle with me, you know, um, it would, it would have been a scene. It would have been a scene. He doesn't like technology. So as it is. So it was just kind of funny. And I had to share that with you, but what are you guys thankful for? Share, share, share. Okay. Angela says going to have all my kids and my parents together tomorrow. Awesome. I am grateful for my kids, grandkids, and so much more. Amen. And Tammy says, that is what I always wonder. I know, right? With the push button. It's like, that's just, no, no. And, and it wanted to know, the lady showed me the button that I could push to deactivate the, um, and I guess it's nice. It conserves fuel, but I don't want my vehicle shutting off every time I stop in town and then starting when I push the gas. Uh, I, I'll stick with the horse and buggy. It might get honorary, but I can I can work with that. I know how to handle that. This stuff, I don't want a vehicle that drives itself because next thing you know, where will I end up, right? So, oh my goodness, such funny stuff. I just had to had to have fun with that. My mom's car is that way. Yeah, I I mean I have to I have to say that the GPS on this is much greater than uh, Google Maps on my phone because it at least gives me a mile or two warning where Google, you know, turn here to the right and you're three lanes over to the left, you know. So I, I have to give it credit for that. It's a good car. It's, it's making really good time. It's got really good gas mileage. Oh, and that was the other funny thing. Living in the wilderness definitely makes 
you brute. Like I said, I almost went through the windshield when I hit the brakes. But the funny thing is, um, looking at the speedometer and it's almost at 90, I had to tone it down a little bit and use the good old cruise control. That was a little fast for 60. So anyway, no, I've always had a heavy foot, so. <laughs> but um, thank goodness for cruise control. And I'm eating, I'm so excited. I made um, einkorn flour sour cream cookies, but I kicked it up a notch and I added pumpkin and cinnamon last night and they are so good. And I bought the, brought the Mountain Boy the sour cream cookies. They were my grandmother's, it's her recipe. And uh, I've loved them since I was a little kid and he loves them just as much, so it's kind of cool. So I brought him some cookies too. Yesterday, I was busy baking like an absolute fiend. Um, let's see, I made two batches of different kinds of cookies. I made a pumpkin pie, I made four pumpkin rolls, two loaves of bread, oh, and I roasted some coffee. So, everything is ready. I just gotta put the bird in the oven when I get home tonight and make mashed potatoes, candied yams, and what was the other thing I'm making? Um, green bean casserole. So all my men will be together. Mountain Ben is coming home, and I will have the Mountain Boy probably in about an hour and a half. So I'm excited about that. So I won't be on here long with you, and I'm sorry I'm late. It was just I didn't know where I would end up at 1030. It didn't put me at a good spot. It was in the, in the middle of the desert. So... Um, so I'm glad to hear you guys are grateful for things and we should always be grateful. Shelly says those new cars drive so smoothly that you do not realize that you're going that fast. Oh my goodness. I know I, I would have been going faster had I not like looked down. And then when I do have it set at 75, I feel like I need to push it or start pedaling. <laughs> it is pretty bad, but it's all good. It's all in the humor. I'm not complaining. Um, it, uh, this I wasn't even sure how things were going to work out this morning, so um, financially and otherwise. So God is good. Um, we were afraid to take the truck this far. It was having problems on the way out here when I took him, and the mountain man has some places to go, so we wanted to try to keep the mileage off of it. So, so it's all good. But let me see here. Angela says, me too. Bunch of rolls, cookies, cinnamon rolls. Still need to make pies today. I'm so grateful that I did all that yesterday. And it was good. And the mountain man jumped in and helped me. Um, he was flipping cookies off trays and stuff. So it worked out really good. And tomorrow will be, will be good. Um, I'm so thankful um, that my men are home. And hopefully the mountain man has some full traps today. Uh, we were out setting some new ones yesterday. Um... Shelly says, yummy to the uh, green bean casserole. Yeah, I love that. And I got to put the uh, onions on top. Mm, yummy. So glad your drive is going well. Yes, me too. I got to share another funny. It's like tumbleweed heaven. It should say alongside of the road, tumbleweed crossing. And what's funny is watching people react to them. Some people swerve, which kind of makes me a little nervous. At least in Idaho, it says, deer crossing or elk crossing something big so you'd have reason to swerve their tumbleweeds anyway it's really funny then you have the others that hit them and these things just poof into like a million little pieces it's just it's just kind of comical but it's just funny watching people I'm definitely a people watcher so just makes the drive a little better and I'm thankful for you guys I needed this I only got about two and a half hours sleep last night well, about three. I woke up at about uh, two fifteen, and I could not fall back to sleep. I was, I think, more concerned that my alarm wouldn't go off, which has happened uh, twice in the last two weeks because my battery was low from uploading things. And I wanted to make sure I didn't miss getting on the road. So just funny, but I needed a, a breather of driving through the desert and watching tumbleweeds and people. So. Krista says, I'm going to my mom, so all I have to make is a veggie. Nice. Nice. I love baking, though. Um, my back and my lap muscles get pretty tired when I'm in the kitchen for a long time. But the mountain man was also kind in that way, too. While I was stirring things or baking things, he was rubbing my back. So I'm very blessed that way, too. But one of the things that I want to remind everybody is that, you know, being grateful and having a grateful mindset and, uh, 
even giving thanks all the time is something that we should be doing on a regular basis and it is something that people don't realize has transformational qualities look at my life for example you know I could have wallowed in so many different things and and been stuck in the negative because of circumstances and it would have just made life very miserable and I don't want to be in that place and we all go through different things day to day um, in life sometimes we go through valleys but the more we can focus on the good in life and the more we are thankful for things and are willing to see the blessings, it is transformational. It changes our lives. It changes our perspective. It changes the amount of joy and happiness we have in our lives. And a lot of people just get into the, the joyful season in November and they want to do 31 days of uh, Thanksgiving and gratitude and there's nothing wrong with that. But it should be daily. It should be daily. We need to do that. And something that I've gotten in the practice of is not only being grateful, but in my prayers when I pray, I thank God for everything. But one of the biggest things is I thank Him for what He's going to do. He is almighty and powerful, and He does such amazing things. And I I like to praise Him. And I, I just... I feel so tremendously blessed and um, even in our darkest times, I couldn't just sit here and say I was grateful for one thing. Um, there's so many. Shelly says, maybe stop on the way back so you and Austin can give us an update on what and how he is doing. I'm sure we would love to hear all about it. Oh, that's cool. I thought about that. I know he's going to be a little exhausted because he was pushing through his day, but he is with us until Sunday. So if I don't do something today, I'm thinking about maybe one day um, over the next three sitting down with him and, and doing an update because I think it would be good. He's doing very well there um, and it'll be interesting to see the growth in him as well as um, you know what he's up to so thank you I appreciate that and I will do that Krista says gotta get going have a safe trip home happy Thanksgiving to you all right back at you sister love you happy Thanksgiving and take care of yourself so I'm not gonna stay on here long today because I don't want to have him up there waiting for me but um, one of the oh I do have another question what are some of your most favorite Thanksgiving memories or and or what are your favorite traditions? Um, one of the things we do is we like to um, have unique meals, wild game meals, different things, uh, things that our guests enjoy having. So I always ask Mountain Ben, you know, what he what something he'd have that would make him feel kind of at home, that type of thing. And we also go around the table and we share what we are thankful for. And um, that can be really unique and very neat uh, depending what people are sharing. Um, we also invite guests. We invite people that don't have anywhere to go. We invite um, friends that uh, you know don't have family in, in the area. So, um, so that's what I enjoy. I enjoy being able to, to go around the table and share what everybody is thankful for, but I also just love having my family, uh, surrounding myself with good people, surrounding myself um, with those that love me and um, that I love. So that that is something that I, I'm just so thankful for, but that's something that we do. That's our tradition. And sometimes we'll go on a turkey hunt, but we were already set up for what we needed for the, the meal, so we didn't do that. But I want to share, we're going to continue talking about marriage, but I decided today, I don't think because of my time frame, I'm going to share everything that I was going to. Um, <clears throat> so we'll take that on into next week. But for those of you that have been following for that reason, all the resources are down below. If you know somebody struggling in marriage or needs help or someone that's planning to get married, um, down below are all the resources but there's also the homework section and I encourage you to share those three videos those three videos are so incredible and I really feel it very strong on my heart to help people um, that are struggling 
because marriage and biblical marriage is important just as much as having God in our society, uh, reading the Bible, being able to speak his name, being able to say Merry Christmas without offending people. Um, it's just important that we are able to renew our marriages, keep them strong, uh, value them as something of importance um, wh- rather than the throwaway um, society that we're in and the way things are being viewed. Um, let's see here. Oh my, huh. It mustn't charge while it's off. Okay. Let me push start my car. Okay. Um, oh, now it's going to do the seatbelt number. Oh my word. I'm telling you. (gasps) I was jamming. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm going to stick to the horse and buggy. Yep. Yep, yep. Okay, so here we go. So now let me go back to see what some of you were saying. Okay, Diana says, Right now, I'm thankful that we just sold a box spring. Picking it up today. Awesome. Awesome. That's cash cash in your pocket. That is so awesome. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I've got GPSs, like, going all over the place here. Oh, my gosh. All right, so, anyway, let's see. I was just going to say... The obey traffic laws. Be alert and use... I will obey traffic laws. Shh. Please proceed to the highlighted route, and then the route guidance will start. Great, thank you. I'm not going anywhere yet, and I've turned you down. Stop talking. <laughs> the mountain man would just love this. I could just picture it. So Shelly said, I was just going to say the go around the table thing. Awesome. And uh, Angela says, my husband almost <laughs> always goes elk hunting with whichever kids have a tag. This has been a sore spot for me, but it's definitely a tradition that has developed in our family. Ah, awesome. So <clears throat> is this explain the sore spot is that because you don't get to go because you're home cooking I'm wondering share Um, I listen to the videos where's the homework the homework is just the videos watching those three videos watching um, what biblical marriage is um, what the man's role is and what the woman's role is those are the three videos Um, the resources down below are great extra things to check out I think we can always improve our relationships. Um, one of the things that I, I enjoy is my time with the mountain man and talking with him. Sometimes things get so rushed for both of us that we um, catch ourselves um, a little disconnected. So we take time and, and spend quality time totally disconnected each day. Um, and, you know, listening to one another is key. You know, when we take the time to clearly hear what our spouses are saying um, and and paying attention to their needs, but also just listening and being excited for them is really important. And in the busyness in life, I think that sometimes those areas tend to get neglected. Let me see here. Tammy says, I am ever so thankful for my family and friends. Our biggest tradition is a big meal together. Awesome. This is funny too. I wanted to share this. I got in here. Okay, hold on a second. Goodbye. Um, I got in here too, and I brought my equipment to plug in to the, the lighter, and usually it's up on the dash so that my phone holder could be there, and uh, it's down here. So I would have been like leaning off funny and it's got USB little jiggers in here and everything else. But thankfully I did bring my pack and I had all the stuff I needed to try to rig this up. I have something hanging off the steering wheel. So always being prepared. By the way, while I'm traveling in this rental car, I have my, uh, my day pack and I have wool blankets. Don't leave home without this. My Alaska Guides Creation Pack, it goes on the front of me. So I have my hands free to maneuver and walk through woods, walk through whatever, pull my gun if I have to, whatever. So love that pack. 
and am out here prepared uh, in the event of bad weather as well. They were calling for snow and it is extremely high winds, so um, it was like 50 mile an hour winds. So being prepared when you go somewhere is really important. Just wanted to remind you of that when you're on the road this weekend. Um, Okay, I think I answered everybody's questions and comment, read their comments. Um, one thing I found that I think I would like to read today. Let me see here. Um, this is something that I think I am going to read real quick. And then I'm probably going to hit the road. But... Marriage is important to me um, because I feel that when you value something and, and you and you choose to hang on to it and you choose to view it that way, um, what you will put into it and what you will gain from it will be amazing. And today, like I said, so much of society is a throwaway society. We feel we aren't worthy. We we quickly abandon things. It's just kind of it's it's kind of crazy. I was listening to some different things on the way here, and depression and sadness, and you know, people look really good on the outside, but on the inside, they're hurting. And when we can be in relationships that build us and nurture us and cause us to um, find happiness and joy. We benefit so greatly, um, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. Um, physically because when we're in low places, that is really hard on our physical being as well. So my most favorite relationship is with God. My second most favorite relationship is with my husband. And then it goes down to my, my boy and my children and my friends. Um, I put God first because with God first I can be the best I can be for my husband and my man and I value him he builds me he doesn't break me and um, as a result of that I feel like such a better person and when we are walking out biblical marriage that is what is created because both parties are on the same page and that doesn't mean that we don't mess up sometimes you know like when we're when someone's busy and they're trying to do something and things are going wrong it doesn't mean that they won't get short with you or you won't have tiffs and you won't have struggles here and there but if you are both focusing on the aspect of biblical marriage and you are um, both in it for the long haul when things do happen and fights do occur you're fighting for your marriage and you learn to fight for your marriage more so than you learn to fight for your pride. I think that I, I, we learn to be, come out of ourselves and focus on the other. When what a lot of biblical marriage is is serving one another by choice. Because when things are right and and are aligned in a biblical marriage sense, you want to submit, you want to serve, um, and and that is why I've been doing this these this series because things are so out of whack and so jaded in the thought process and and people have been hurt and and misinterpret things. So um, let me see here. Oh, Angela says no help from him and being taken for granted. I. I get complaints about things I cook wrong instead of being happy that I made a bunch of stuff. Anyway, I'm learning to have a thicker skin and not react. Yeah, that's hard. That That is hard. And um, you know what? Uh, in those circumstances, I've, I've been in those circumstances previously, in a previous marriage. And um, what I've learned since then is to let it roll and I feel sorry for them and pray for them instead. Sorry for them in that they don't realize the sacrifice that you're making and and that uh, they are truly blessed to come home to a warm home after elk hunting and have food on the table. 
So just pray for that. Pray. Because like I said in the past parts of this series is we can't change them or their hearts. But God can. And um, sometimes too, as we change and learn to handle things differently, they see our reactions um, and, and maybe even that they don't get a reaction because sometimes people operate with weird motives and um, and I'm not saying this is the case here um, my girlfriend this I'm I'm sidelining here and in, in the back of my mind I'm hearing my girlfriend saying clueless Clarence and we also used to say clueless Clarice um, when people are in situations and they are totally clueless to what they've just done, what they've just said, how they've made somebody feel. But there are other people out there that go, that are looking for a reaction. And when they don't get the reaction, they almost get dumbfounded. And sometimes by us altering how we react to things, uh, and, and just move along, um, it may cause them to think a little bit as to what they said and and what how that might have been received so um, I will be praying for you Angela because that's a tough spot to be in um, it's hard when you um, you feel taken advantage of or or that you're not good enough and um, we're hard enough on ourselves you know I've, I've been telling you guys for the whole year and I think even last year you know we got to be careful what we say to ourselves and um, I'm gonna bring that back up now as well because I've caught myself saying some funny things to myself lately um, just in our hustle bustle and I've had to actually correct myself um, but in these certain circumstances when these things happen and we feel lesser we need to because others won't build ourselves up and I don't mean in that we need to get prideful I just mean that you know like you said you get thicker skin and and not react and and you you remind yourself that it's not you that you spent time baking for your family making food for your family and just because everybody's tastes are different doesn't mean that what you did wasn't sufficient or fantastic. It's, it's a problem with their heart. So we've got to be willing to remind ourselves that and, and not add to it by having negative things to say about ourselves. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention today too, because this is what I was in previously, um, when you are in a marriage that is having struggles um, and you are a believer, but the other party is not, or the spouse is not. It can be v very difficult times, and your only resource there is going to be heavily, heavily praying, um, because you don't have the ability to change them, and, um, if they are not believers, they are well under the control of the enemy, so you've got, like, a double battle, in your hands it does not mean that you can't overcome but you need to make sure that you have given your situation to God and let God be the one that's controlling it um, it just makes it 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 is a difficult situation but like I said it doesn't mean that it's the end all and um, I wanted to mention also for those of you that may either you have in the past or you might be going through a situation. In my previous marriage, um, I was cheated on for two years and I didn't know about it. I tried very hard when I found out to make things work because of my children. I was devoted because of my children and um, he chose to leave anyway and it left me feeling like there was a lot wrong with me when I realized later and actually celebrated um, the other woman because she removed me from a really bad situation and a really um, you know I realized where I was and how beaten down I was and I, I celebrated that 
because and I and I thank God for that because he removed me from something and had better plans for me and he certainly did so not everything always works out the way we want it to and and divorce may not be the thing that we want um, but it could it could be part of God's plan um, in my circumstances I know that I did everything in my power to make an effort to make things work so I knew that I had given my all and in those circumstances we have to trust God and trust his plan and and um, be willing to walk out his will and seek his will in those situations um, life hands us all kinds of interesting things but I wanted to mention that today because sometimes things just happen and they happen the way they do for a reason despite all our greatest efforts. But the thing is when we are when we are committed to our marriage and we work hard towards our marriages and we keep God in that equation, you know, you are heading in the right direction and you are focusing on um, something wholesome and when you are with somebody that you know is totally committed to is a believer is walking it out with you um, that is such a great reward and a comfort to know that you have somebody that's not just gonna bail on you and unfortunately in today's society that does happen you know and that's why I want to try to enrich the lives and help people to understand what the expectations are how you can achieve goodness in your marriage. Um, next week, we're going to talk about forgiveness and walking out some pretty heavy stuff. Um, Shelly says, I celebrated the other woman also. She took away the guilt of leaving him alone. <laughs> yeah, and um, I, it's okay to do that. I, I was right there with you, and you know I was celebrating that she had him and I didn't have to anymore because once you're out of some of the situations sometimes you can look back and see what you were drugged through and that was kind of the deal but yeah and and good for you and you know what sometimes we need to like I said walk this tough stuff out it may not be what we prayed for it may not be what we ultimately wanted and and in these circumstances we have to trust that God has a good plan for us and I wanted to share something today because one of the greatest things I am I am grateful for is my salvation I am grateful that God has shared in my heart and and really uh, pushed me to be more open with my faith um, I'm seeing the results of that and I just wanted to share this um, with you guys today too sinful to save is what it's called and you can read the the uh, um, reference uh, later uh, in your time it's first Timothy 1 12 through 17 sometimes people avoid Christ's offer of salvation because they feel they've messed up so badly that their sins are unforgivable Perhaps that's how John Newton, a former slave trader, felt before he experienced God's mercy and penned this line from his famous hymn, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound That Saved a Wretch Like Me. The Apostle Paul had similar feelings. He saw himself as the foremost of sinners, but that didn't stop him from believing in Jesus as his Savior and Lord. In fact, as he took back I'm sorry, look back at the wonderful display of divine grace in his life. Paul recognized he was being used as an example of how far God's grace can reach. Jesus came to save sinners, so if you are a sinner, his grace is available to you for salvation. In other words, if Paul's and John Newton's sins were forgivable, so are yours. In fact, those who regard themselves as wretches are in a better position than many who consider themselves good and think a Savior is unnecessary. God's grace comes to those who acknowledge their sin and see the need for salvation. No matter how vast your sins, God's grace is greater. The truth is, all human beings are wretches because no one can be good enough to earn acceptance by a holy God. You can either be condemned in your sins or turn to Christ, whose blood paid your penalty for sin so you could receive a full pardon. If you accept his gracious salvation, God may even use your past as a witness so that other sinners can be saved. 
I wanted to read that today because those of you out there that don't have a relationship because you feel that you are are not worthy, you're so very wrong. And I want to encourage you to reconsider that. And as always, if you need prayers, reach out at prayers at treyerwilderness.com. You can private message me. You can leave the comments in the comments below. Um, God is good and all of his promises are true and I stand on them. I live by them and I find great joy and happiness in my life. Um, I've overcome things too. I am not, I am not perfect by any stretch um, and none of us are. Uh, we need to ask for forgiveness on a regular basis, I'm sure, and, uh, and, and be thankful for what he does in our lives and how he gives us such grace and mercy all the time. And um, I want to remind you guys of something because I come from a past of physical and verbal abuse. And um, when you're in those situations, whether it's in marriage or in a friendship, um, setting boundaries is always good. But something else that we need to remember is um, because we get so accustomed to the abuse that we expect it. And sometimes because we expect it and we're looking for it, we manifest it. So when you have people in your life that have negative things to say, it's okay to pray that God will bind their lips and only allow them to say something pleasant. I've done it many times. And he answers those prayers. And also just to... Um, you know, realize that sometimes the people that always have hurtful things to say are typically hurting themselves, which is a very true fact in my past. The people that were hurting me had lots of uh, baggage and lots of their own hurts and didn't know how to handle their hurts. Therefore, they um, projected it onto other people. So, Truly, we have such a huge power in the ability to pray for other people. And um, when we learn that we are not defined by other people's inability to see our worth, that's pretty powerful. Um, my mother-in-law shared that with me three years ago when I had to abandon my own family. And uh, it, those were such powerful, powerful words for me that truly um, built me up and taught me to stand firm in who I am. And I want to encourage you guys, if you are walking out verbal abuse and struggling with people that are close to you that are harmful and hurtful, um, that you stand firm on those words because you are beautifully and wonderfully made. And when people are struggling on their own, they're hurtful. And some people just have evil hearts and, 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 and need Jesus. So keep that in mind um, as you're walking your days out. It's so sad to me because the negativity has become generational and our adult kids struggle with it. ESP, especially my son. Okay. I totally hear that. And you know what? Um, you know, Angela, we have the power to change generational negativity by setting boundaries, sometimes as extreme as walking away. I had to do that and it was one of the most powerful things I've had to do in my life for myself and I did it for my son too because I didn't want him to become a byproduct of um, my family history and um, it is it is very true but we do have the power and that doesn't mean walk you know I don't I'm not encouraging people to walk away from their family. Um, I did because I realized that for 46 years I was hanging on to a relationship that was never going to change unless their hearts changed. And that what I was walking through was more damaging to me walking through it than if I walked away and prayed for them. So I don't want to encourage people to walk away from people close to them. Um, Pray for people close to you that do struggle. Um, if it is something that's going to um, 
improve your well-being, sometimes it is a, it is a necessity. Um, I will be praying for you, girl. Um, that's some tough stuff. And um, in those times, what I have done for myself when I was walking through stuff like that is that I was doing things to better myself. We can't change people. We can't change their perspective. We can't change their minds. We can't change their hearts. God can. And what we can do is pray for them and, and, and also make an extreme effort to improve ourselves and to change how we react, how we live, how we love. And, and that is what I'm going to end on today because I do have to hit the road. I do want to go get my boy. And um, I thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm sorry this is short. And um, as always, if you guys need to talk further, you're always welcome to email me at prayers at treyerwilderness.com or private message me. But truly, when we pull into the Word of God and when we pray and when we focus on improving what we can improve, which is us, we can't improve anybody else, but we can improve ourselves and we can pr in improve ourselves in a lot of fabulous ways. Um, and, and learning to love those that hate can be the hardest thing to do. Um, but when you get there, you know, you will know you're there because you feel love in your heart for somebody that's absolutely hateful. Um, so learning how to pray for people and that is really important and that is our biggest and best blessing we have is to be able to pray for people. So guys, I'm going to say a prayer here and I'm going to hit the road and um, I'm just going to pray and then I'll have a few more words. Jesus, I just thank you, Papa, for this wonderful day allowing me to go get my boy. Thank you for your travel mercies. Thank you for these beautiful people taking time to join me. And I just ask that you be with each and every one of them. All of us have things we're walking out. Some are big, some are, are small, but we all struggle. And I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around everyone present, everyone that is watching the replay, and just love on them. Help them to learn to set boundaries, to discern where they need to make changes and to learn how to pray and, and know that they can have such an amazing open relationship with you and that we can change people through our prayers and that we can help others to have a relationship with Christ, that we can help people to have a happier and more joyful life. And I just thank you for what you're going to do in each and every one of our lives. I thank you for what you're going to do for each and every one of us tomorrow as we um, give great thanksgiving for you, your blessings, your mercy, your grace, and everything that you do for us on a daily basis. And I just ask that you keep your hand of safety on all of us as we travel and uh, go about our, our week and our weekend. And I just love you, and I, I ask all of this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Oh, and real quickly, I just ask that you also please keep your hand on all of those on our prayer list. Thanks for the message. It's a powerful one. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Thank you, Mel. And I finally did see your other comments after last week. So thank you for sharing those. And it's good to have you joining us. I'm really thankful to always see new faces. Say hi to Austin from all of us. Safe trip. Love you, girl. And you take care of yourself. Say some extra prayers for Shelly for healing. Also, everyone say some prayers for Angela as she goes through her Thanksgiving. And uh, Tammy could also use some prayers, please. And Diana and Craig. And my friend Mark, who is going through cancer right now with multiple melanoma, he is going through some stem cell treatments right now in Seattle. So please keep him in your prayers as well as Pat Kenny, who is also go, going through the same. Um, he is doing the infusion treatments um, to get his immune system fighting the cancer, which is really awesome, and I'm so thankful for that treatment. Uh, but he has uh, gotten bronchitis again, and it just hangs on with him forever because of his cancer So and his immune system. So guys, I love you all. Thank you. I will try to get on here with you guys with Austin. That would be so much fun. I just wish you all a fabulous and very blessed Thanksgiving and, and take care and God bless.